just wanted to read from um, Proverbs 18 and verse 7, right? uh, Proverbs, probably 6 and 7. Um, it says, a fool's lips enter into contention and his mouth calls for blows. Um, verse 7 is, uh, a fool's mouth is his destruction and his lips are the snare of his soul. Okay, just want us to focus on verse 7. It says, a fool's mouth is his destruction. And notice the second part of it. And his lips are the snare of his soul. Meaning, uh, obviously, it's talking about the words being spoken and um, uh, unwise or foolish words being spoken and how it affects, you know, uh, it causes a quarrel or even a fight. Um, so uh, a fool's mouth is his destruction. And the lips are the snare of his soul. Meaning, it's a trap. A snare, we know it's a trap. A trap. Uh, which we use to um, kind of capture animals or, you know, whatever. So uh, it says that uh, lips are the snare, which means the words that we speak are a trap for our soul. You know, whatever happens in our in the soul realm, um, the words, thoughts, imaginations, everything, the words that we speak are a snare. Okay. So um, so obviously it's in a, the ne connotation is negative. It's like a snare for the soul. So uh, our thinking and everything gets trapped by the words that we speak but if you just flip that around and look at it in a in a positive way you see that the lips are a snare for the soul yeah it is a it is a snare but it captures something good right it is when we speak things that are wholesome edifying um, and uh, when we speak the truth declare the truth irrespective of um, you know what we see in the natural um, of the circumstances, we speak the word of truth, speak maybe prophetic words that have been spoken over us, sing those things over us. It is a snare for the soul. The same way the soul or our mind trapped those things, uh, imaginations and thoughts and thought patterns, um, the same way it's going to snare or trap the good things. Right, the positive things, the faith-filled, um, uh, faith-filled imaginations, or renewed thought patterns and imaginations, and so on. So, um, so when we look at it, you know, there's something powerful that uh, the words that we're speaking are actually trapping. You know, it's like a, it's like a fly catcher. It's like a trap. Uh, it's like a net, if you want to call it that. You know, if you want to look at it that way, a net to capture those emotions and thoughts and imaginations. So, um, so. Yeah, just wanted to share that, that we be mindful of that as we are, you know, uh, talking about the soul realm and emotional wholeness, inner wholeness and so on. It's so very important um, that we consider the words that we speak. Just another reminder for us, right? So let's uh, let's pray on those lines. Father God, we thank you that uh, the, the words that we speak are a snare or a net or a trap for our soul, oh God. So thank you for reminding us of that, Lord. And uh, Lord, may we intentionally speak words that are faithful, the words that you have spoken over us, God. Lord, the promises that we see Lord, in your word, Father God, that you have quickened to our hearts, Lord. Now, maybe, maybe just uh, speak them over our lives. Maybe just declare them over our lives over and over again, oh, Father God. And may our thoughts, may our emotions, God, may our uh, imaginations, Lord, be captured, Lord, be brought captive, God, uh, to those words, Father God. And um, yeah, let's just take some time to just speak those words, you know, whatever God has spoken over us. Um, and whatever we have read in scripture, you know, maybe it could be specific things that God the, God has spoken over you and says, you will be this, you know, you will be the head and not the tail, or you will be a voice to the nation, or you will be uh, a, a source of influence and impact uh, you know, in this place. Just speak that over your life. Yes, I will be, because God has said so. Hallelujah. We thank you. We thank you. We bless your name, Jesus. We bless your name, Jesus. We thank you for the power, Lord, of your word, that your word is eternal, O God. And we speak your word, God. Yes, O God, you have spoken, Lord. You've said, O God, that we are the righteousness of God in Christ. And we and we say uh, amen to that. And they say, I am. I say, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. I am a new creation. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father God. I am being led in a triumphant procession in Christ Jesus in every circumstance, in every situation. Hallelujah. We thank you. We thank you. I bless your name, God. I thank you, Lord. Thank you. I am more than a conqueror, oh God. In all the circumstances, I am more than a conqueror. Lord, through you, oh Father God. 
Hallelujah. Blessed be your name. Yes, Lord, your word declares that, uh, Lord, sin shall not have dominion over me, O God. And so I do declare, even right now, sin shall not have do dominion over me. Hallelujah. Lord, we, we, we do declare even right now that, uh, that you are able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think, O oh God. Yes, Lord, and we declare that, yes, for me, O oh God, you are able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that I can ask or imagine, God, through your power, the power of your spirit that is at work in me, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. I bless your name, God. We thank you, Father God. Thank you. Yes, Lord, we, we pray, O oh God, that we will be propelled, moved forward, God, by what is happening in our soul, O oh God. You know, yes, we will move to action, we will be moved to positive things, uh, faithful things, Father God, uh, even today, even right now, God. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Um, so it's uh, yeah, it's very important that we you know uh, we've been talking about uh, um, the things that actually uh, you know cause these problems, and we looked at uh, wrong thinking, wrong mindsets, uh, wrong believing, and then we looked at uh, words, wrong speaking, wrong words. Um, then also we also looked at continual deep seated sin, right? The repeated sin, which opens the door uh, to the demonic influence um, and so on. Um, it's a lot of noise in the background. Okay. Um, okay. Let me just uh, double check that one second. No, but it's good. It's okay. So it's okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. 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 Fine. Um, there is also um, okay. Probably you can check uh, Divya. Um, something that's happening there. I can actually click the noise cancellation also. And there's a muffle with the mic person. Maybe that's the thing. This, uh, now, now is it okay? It's, uh, how is it now? Yeah, I think now it's, it's better. better. Better? Okay, I just clicked on the noise cancellation. Okay, great. Okay, maybe I'll just switch off the AC. Okay, is that okay? I think some ambient noise would have gone. Okay, right. So we're looking at um, you know uh, some of these things which cause problems. Okay, um, so the fourth one is uh, trauma and adverse circumstances. Like trauma meaning you know something uh, a, a traumatic experience, something that jolts us, uh, uh, something that causes uh, uh, a shock and pain. And uh, you know this, uh, we see that, yeah, that also uh, affects us emotionally, affects the inner person, right? And um, well, uh, we we may be aware of it, we may we may not be aware of it. So that's the thing, you know, it's uh, something so deep rooted, something that has happened a long time back. And I think I was uh, sharing about uh, that experience that I had. Uh, about uh, you know that problem uh, and the, the the experience that I had when I was uh, uh, in in school and uh, that music competition and I sang and then uh, you know just shared about that right so uh, okay that was uh, uh, even the, it, it was not a very serious thing but it actually set me back uh, so I didn't want to you know sing or pick up the guitar for for some time for for at least four, four five years right so. So that happened. Um, so it can be something even more traumatic, right? Something maybe like physical abuse, maybe um, you know emotional abuse, uh, something that's you know, caused uh, uh, maybe the death of a loved one, the sudden shocking death of a loved one, and um, all these things, right? And something that happened to us, um, you know, physical abuse or sexual abuse. Um, so these could cause a lot of trauma. Um, but the good thing is, again, um, you know, even before we're going to look at a lot of negative things, but uh, the good thing is that we can actually be emotionally made whole. Right? There is healing, there is restoration uh, in Christ, and the finished work of the cross is more than um, more than uh, enough for us to receive healing and wholeness. Right. So uh, let's look at one more. Uh, let's move on to the next one, which is. Um, um, 
yeah, which is involvement in occult and false religions. Okay, if there is a involvement by anyone in the occult of uh, when we say occult, occult, we are talking about uh, you know dealing with the spiritual realm, but spiritual realm in the sense there's uh, evil spirits or uh, powers of uh, darkness. Um, so when there is a uh, when there is intentional involvement in occult, then uh, obviously we open the door intentionally for the enemy to come in and uh, and uh, have a deep seated root um, and uh, for in, in a demonic influence. And so even as believers, when we do that intentionally, you know, we are uh, we are actually opening our lives for demonic influence, demonic oppression. Right. So we need to be uh, we need to be aware. We need to be careful. Uh, the thing is, the greater one is in us. You know, we are more than conquerors, right? Through Him. Um, so, and we, uh, and uh, the greater one is in us. Um, so, we, uh, the thing is that uh, the only way that the enemy can have an upper hand is, uh, uh, of course, if we give the right uh, to do that, we give the a judicial ground, right? We give the right to do uh, for the enemy to come in and and take uh, uh, take the place. And also through fear and intimidation, you know, we, we are fearful and we are intimidated, and uh, and and therefore the enemy uh, takes uh, you know takes the upper hand. Um, uh, so if we look at one Corinthians ten and verse twenty nine, um, tw ni sorry nineteen to twenty one, one Corinthians nine uh, ten nineteen. Um, so Paul is here talking about the whole uh, you know aspect of uh, idolatry, and also he's talking about the communion. And he's talking about uh, uh, communion, the body of Christ. He's talking about the cup of blessing and so on. And in that, he's actually comparing that with uh, um, the, the, the uh, people, actually, the Corinthian church believers, uh, either knowingly or unknowingly, being part of uh, uh, idol worship. And of those times, they were actually a meal. It was actually a meal. So they would be invited to the altar of that, how typically an invitation would go, uh, the altar of, you know, you put the uh, deity there, uh, the name of the deity, and then the altar. So it'll it'll be that ritual and uh, culminating in a lot of horrible things, right? Uh, you know, uh, sexual immorality and uh, and then you know eating of uh, uh, it'll end up in a meal, eating and drinking and so on. So um, so Paul is talking about that, and in verse nineteen he's saying, "What am I saying then? That an idol is anything, or what is offered to idols is anything?" He's saying, no, no, uh, we know that our idol is nothing you know, compared to the, the power and the, and the victory that the Lord has won for us. So on the cross, so an idol is, it's nothing, right? Um, but he also goes on to say, rather that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to demons and not to God. And I do not want you to have fellowship with demons. Right? You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. You cannot partake of the Lord's table and of the table of demons. So it was actually part of the worship. So he's, he's talking about that. It's not like food offered to idol is going to trap you or you're going to be, you know, instantly when you eat it. it it's 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 not that. It's it's not that. But the fact is that you're fellowshipping with demons um, as you go through the entire process, and you know you're you're actually going and being part of this whole thing. And so you're fellowshipping, communing, and receiving from demons, right? So I do not want you to be part of that. So uh, involvement in occult and false religions. There could be many other practices. Um, so these would lead to, uh, you know, uh, 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 to be a be uh, 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 opening our lives, opening our soul to uh, demonic influence and oppression. Well, let's look at uh, you know what the Lord uh, says. De Deuteronomy seven. And uh, verse 25, right? Uh, you shall burn the carved images of their gods with fire. You shall not covet the silver or gold that is on them, nor take it for yourselves, lest you be snared by it. Okay, again, trapped by it, for it is an abomination to the Lord your God. Verse 26, nor shall you bring an abomination into your house, lest you be doomed to destruction like it. You shall utterly desert, detest it and utterly abhor it. For it's an accursed thing. Okay, so he's talking about, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, maybe uh, articles of worship or carved images and so on. So the Lord is actually um, giving uh, this instruction to the Israelites. 
Right? And we see a similar instruction in Deuteronomy 18. Um, Deuteronomy 18 and uh, verse 9. Okay. Deuteronomy 18 verse 9. And when you come into the land which the Lord is, uh, Lord your God is giving you, you shall not learn to follow the abominations of those nations. So practices, principles, uh, religious practices and principles and customs and so on. So you shall not learn to follow the abominations. And goes on to talk about certain things which were found in those days. You know, there shall not be found among you anyone who makes his son or his daughter pass through the fire or one who practices witchcraft, or a soothsayer, or one who interprets omens, or a sorcerer, one who conjures spells, or a medium, or a spiritist, or one who calls up the dead. For all who do these things are an abomination to the Lord. Because of these abominations, the Lord your God drives them out before you. You shall be blameless before the Lord your God. For these nations which you shall dispossess, listened to soothsayers and diviners. But as for you, the Lord your God has not appointed such for you. So very clear that um, the reason why the Lord detests is this, that uh, you know the Lord does not want any of his uh, sons and daughters to have communion with fellowship with demonic spirits. Because demonic spirits, the only agenda is to steal, kill, and destroy, and uh, deceive, and oppress, and uh, and bring people uh, to destruction. Okay, so that's the uh, and that's the thing. And it's, uh, we know it's it's a substitute for God, right? Uh, or idolatry is a substitute for God. So we also know that um, you know, it, 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 like all these articles, the demons can actually attach themselves to it so um so we can cleanse a house and uh, if if the lord shows okay something you know if you feel uncomfortable about something it's better to err on this side and say okay uh, god you know i'm not going to bring it into my house or you know uh, uh, keep it in in my house right so involvement in occult and false religions um again uh are Ancestral commitments and practices. Of course, we are going to be, you know, you'll be learning more about this in healing and deliverance if you've already not done so. So, um, ancestral commitments and practices, which means if there are any dedications that have been done, you know, but, uh, uh, for maybe when you're babies or when you're toddlers, or you know, that happens, right? Maybe the family was in, engaged in practices and, uh, and then that opens a door for uh, our lives, right? uh, in our lives, for the demo demonic attachments and demonic uh, oppression and influence. So um, also happening across generations and so on. So the thing is this, that, um, well, the question that we might ask is, uh, but I'm a believer now, right? I'm a believer now, and uh, what about the completed work of the Lord on the cross? Yes, um, completed work of the cross is more than sufficient. So we just need to, uh, you know, enforce that upon our lives, right? And if uh, knowingly, unknowingly, something has been, um, some dedication has been done, you know, we we just um, break that off. Okay? If we see some recurring thing in our lives, if we see some yeah, some areas of bondage or oppression. We break that. We break that off and say, no, no, no more. We will not tolerate this. No, this is broken off. The, the finished work of the cross, we enforce that. And we, we you know, uh, actually, we, we declare and enforce the finished work of the cross in in, in the sacraments of the church, right? When we, when we take water baptism, we are actually proclaiming that we are dead to the works of darkness dead to sin, and we are alive in Christ, and we are a purchased possession. We belong to Jesus, right, when we take water baptism. The other thing is also the Lord's table, communion. Every time we, we take part, we are actually declaring that. We are saying, yes, um, this is this is what it is. This is what, what the uh, Christ, this is what the Lord Jesus has done for me on the, on the cross, and therefore, um, I am born again. I belong to Him. Uh, his blood is shed, cleanses me, 
uh, his body that was nailed to the cross, you know, that perfect sacrifice. So we are declaring, proclaiming the finished work of the cross every time. So we can we can actually enforce that, you know, uh, and uh, and declare that whatever dedication was done, if we know it, then we can declare that null and void. Uh, and if we see those patterns in our lives, right? If we see those patterns, I'm you know, I'm prone to this, or I'm drawn to these things, I'm oppressed by these things. We um, you know, break that intentionally, right? Okay, so uh, yeah, uh, more information. Uh, if you have not read the the book, uh, All People's uh, Church publication, uh, Breaking Personal and Generational Bondages, you know, it's a useful, helpful book. You can go through that as well. Okay, so curses, same, you know, um, uh, as curses are, what is a curse? It's a negative blessing. Like, like a blessing is pronounced, uh, and we bless. Um, uh, number six talks about, uh, you know, the, the the Lord Jesus. I mean, I mean, uh, the Lord God instituting, and uh, and saying, okay, this is how, you know, you priests will bless my people. Okay, this is how you will bless, and then, you know, we know the uh, priestly blessing, right? Number six twenty four talks about that. Um, so, uh, the same way. Uh, these words are supposed to, you know, bless and speak good things and open up our lives to the good things, um, the hand of God over our lives. Uh, a curse is a negative thing. Like a curse is something that is uh, that is meant to open the door for the work of the enemy. Okay. Now, a curse. Like in Proverbs that we see, a curse without a cause will not alight. No, there's no, uh, and for a child of God, no, there's no curse. Now we don't have to be fearful. We don't have to be afraid. Right? Uh, we don't have to uh, fear these things. Right? Uh, uh, maybe we see someone and then they are, you know, speaking a curse or whatever. Um, uh, we don't have to be afraid of it. We don't have to be uh, fearful. Okay, um, so, uh, but that also, you know, if, uh, if if it is a curse, it can also uh, have the negative thing over us. So, okay, maybe there's someone else who's speaking, and we know, you know, we reject it. We uh, we uh, you know uh, we speak a blessing over our lives. We consecrate our, ourselves. But many times we speak uh, negative things. Right, over ourselves, we speak a curse over ourselves. So we need to be careful of that, um, because the uh, you know the work of the enemy is to is to actually demonically energize those those words that we speak over our lives. Right? So um, yeah, so that is what we see that they they tend to come and create confusion and uh, uh, and uh, Bring about, uh, you know, if, if you look at John ten ten, talks about the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, right? To steal our joy, to steal our sense of peace, and uh, and destroy uh, all the things that uh, that that we we actually have been built up, or God has been building up in our lives. Okay. So how do these, uh, you know, uh, e evil spirits or powers of darkness gain access? It's through one of these things, right? Uh, they gain access through, like we were looking at, it's a, it's a curse that we speak over ourselves. They gain access um, through dedications. They gain access to, if it's a continual sin, we're opening up our lives. They gain access to it, right? So uh, so these are things to be mindful of. Um, okay, so we, uh, you can go through this in the notes while uh, you know this is being dealt with in, a, in detail. In our healing and deliverance uh, uh, class, uh, the difference between possession and oppression. Okay, but very quickly, just to let us know that uh, in the Greek we we see the word um, uh, the the Greek word which is used there. It says um, uh, there is no distinction between uh, possession or oppression. Right, so it just means uh, uh, being demonized. Okay. So that is, you know, just wanted to mention that demonized. Okay, so 
in the english of course we make that distinction possession and oppression so um, there are different levels of demonization uh, which means these uh, powers of darkness gain access and then different levels to which they demonize influence right um, when we say they could influence they could oppress they could also possess right and in the english we use that word where complete control okay over a person a person is unable to control oneself but it is the demons have gained complete control over a person so um so that complete control we know happens to someone who who does not uh, you know who was not received the lord as lord and savior or maybe you know someone who is um, who does not join jesus who is was not uh, no not received the lord as lord and savior the lord is not the lord of their lives so uh, the possibility of losing complete control to the uh, work of the enemy like right? to be possessed right to be demonized to that extent but as believers you know like we've been seeing all these um, all these examples the way we our soul can be troubled our soul can be ensnared um, we can be oppressed or influenced uh, or demonized to that degree right um, maybe someone is in you know some continual sin you know something like pornography maybe and they're going back to it over and over again so so well they're opening up their lives to be demonized and uh, there's a oppression in that area and oppression in their soul in in it it might uh, maybe uh, manifest itself in terms of uh, uh, maybe not being able to focus not being able to uh, you know sit down and pray and and uh, compulsive thoughts and imaginations and, and strongholds right so so these things could happen and it's uh, uh, the influence to that degree right so whereas for a um, uh, for a believer we know that they cannot lose complete control but it's just one area in our lives right um so that possibility uh, is there right so we look at that let me just yeah okay let's look at some symptoms of demonic activity you know or this oppression this overpowering overbearing uh, this torment uh, there is a continual trouble and, and disturbance um, there's enslaving or compulsive you know thoughts and uh, behavior and uh, you know and people actually doing things against their own will right um and getting stirred up again uh, getting disturbed uh, during uh, heightened uh, you know spiritual activity like prayer or worship or um, you know there's some ministry that's happening preaching that's happening and and getting stirred up and disturbed and uh, you know, something happening within emotionally getting uh, troubled so we know that those are symptoms of demonic activity and uh, also you know there's no known reason not able to identify what reason but there is some kind of a uh, problem either physically or emotionally and everybody says hey, it's fine you know these things are fine the, well, we've done all the routine checkup and exam examined and this you know, everything seems to be fine there's no reason why this person should be going through these kind of things uh, uh, physically or emotionally and and uh, that is also an indicator of demonic uh, oppression right so so we know that these are indicators and uh, how we need to stand in prayer or minister in prayer and counsel a person who is going through that okay so um, any questions here before we go into the pitfalls to avoid any questions okay okay uh, let's look at the pitfalls and then if you have any other uh, questions pitfalls to avoid then if you have any other questions you can uh, ask as well okay some some things to avoid okay um so while we uh, while we need to be careful 
like we cannot say that every problem uh, related to the physical or emotional uh, or with that particular circumstance we, we cannot say that everything is because of demons right so that's a mistake uh, that people can make okay it's because of that demon because of this demon you know um, and uh, we need to understand that uh, this cause and effect like in the sense that uh, well I I did something I left the uh, I forgot to lock the door of whatever the car and I left some things inside and then people you know something's got stolen so there's I cannot blame uh, and say okay the demon did it right so um, we need to take uh, responsibility for our own actions okay so that, but having said that uh, we should also avoid ignoring the work of demons we can either err on these sides, you know, saying that, okay, um, everything is demonic, and then going to the other extreme and saying, okay, nothing is demonic, right? Um, so there's no demonic source at all. But uh, we need to understand, we need to discern and say, okay, this has a spiritual connotation. This this could be demonic, so it has to be dealt with. Okay. Um, just uh, uh, a little bit about uh, deliverance. Um, don't draw attention to yourself if you're praying and ministering. Um, we all have the authority to cast out demons, to deal with, uh, you know, either in our own lives, if they are, if you, if you sense that, okay, there is, seems to be a foothold um, in our own lives or in the lives of other people or in a particular situation, like we have been given the authority. Okay, Luke 10 and verse 19. Uh, talks about the authority that we have been given in Christ. We have we are seated with Christ. Ephesians two and talks about how we are seated with Him in heavenly places. So we have been given the authority in the commissioning uh, of the disciples. We see that the Lord Jesus is saying, "Okay, this is what those who believe in me will do. They will cast out demons." So we have been given the authority by the Lord Jesus Himself. We've been commissioned. So uh, we use that. Authority. Okay, so in ministering to people, we do it in humility, in but with confidence and with the authority that He's given us. So we don't have to draw attention to ourselves. We don't have to put on a you know great drama or act. But we can just do what needs to be done, right? And uh, stay humble and uh, know that it is the Lord who does it. And it is his power in us that, that casts out the demons. Right? Um, so step in, do that, and uh, and uh, grow in that area as well. We don't have to, uh, you know, like give that to some specialists. So we grow in authority. We grow in influence. We grow in authority. Understand that uh, the Lord has given it to us as a child, as a child of God, and we can actually walk in this authority. And it is for us to use, right? So uh, we step up and do it. Okay. So any, any questions here? No questions at all? Um, I don't see anything on the chat as well. So, OK. Okay, moving forward, right? Uh, looking at the third chapter, the restore, the restoration or uh, restoring of our soul. What is the basis for that? What is the basis for a healing and deliverance? Um, what is the basis for even praying for healing and you know, praying for restoration of our soul? Um, what is the basis for that? So we're going to look at uh, a couple of things, right? Um, okay. Um, just a minute, please. Yeah. So we're going to uh, look at uh, part one is um, what is the basis for our healing? And part two is receiving healing and deliverance. We're going to actually look at that. And then uh, we look at, um, you know, journey into emotional wholeness. So we are looking at uh, the realm of the soul. Okay. So the basis for our healing and deliverance you know what? Uh, what? How can we you know, completely base? What can we base it on? 
Okay, the word of God, especially, uh, obviously. But we need to be sure. Okay, we need to be sure that this is what God wants for me. Because if we are not sure, that we will not pray in faith. Okay, I mean this is a basic thing, and I'm sure that uh, you know you, you, we all know it. The fact is this: if, if there's some uh, area of doubt, saying maybe the Lord is causing this. Maybe God wants me to go through this. Um, maybe I should just accept it. You know, whatever uh, problems I'm having, um, or whatever problems that the other person is going through in the in the realm of uh, their soul. Uh, if we if we have to if we come to any of those conclusions, maybe I should just accept it. Maybe I should just maybe God wants me to go through this. Maybe God is teaching me a lesson. Right? If if we are coming to any, if we entertain any such conclusions, then we we will not and we cannot stand in faith and pray. And uh, we will not even take that initiative to step into those, uh, to step into that realm of faith and, and pray. Right? We, will, we will just hold back, right? So that is why we need to know, you know, is there a basis for this? If we need to, Pray for restoration of our soul. If we need to take those steps, um, is there a base? Is there a, is there a biblical basis for it? And we need to be sure of it. Right? We need to be strong in it and say, "Yeah, this is what the Word of God says." And therefore, based on that foundation, you know, I'm taking these steps. Right. So one of the things that we see is we're going back to where we started, like one Thessalonians five, and um, which uh, you know we talked about the makeup of man and we talked about the spirit soul and body so when we when we study that when, when we look at that verse we see that um, uh, yeah 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 23 now may the god of peace himself sanctify you completely okay so this Paul is praying and um, may god do this for you may him may the lord of shalom, right? peace, right? Sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Right? May your whole spirit, soul, and body—something that is, uh, you know, uh, uh, without blemish. So may your whole spirit, soul, and body—something that is, uh, you know. Uh, um, something that can be preserved, guarded, protected, and uh, saying, may it be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord. So when we look at this, we normally think about um, something that is tainted with sin, right? So it's it's because it's, yeah, obviously that's true, because it says, uh, hey, may, may, may he sanctify you, may he, you know, consecrate and keep you separate, right? May he, may he uh, may the Lord of Peace sanctify you completely. Yes, it talks about sanctification and walking uh, uh, in His ways, in holiness, and, and knowing how to really uh, hold our, ourselves, our bodies in, in sanctification and honor, purity. Yes, it's a big part of it. But also, uh, when, we, when, he looks, when we look at this, we see that you know, may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless. So the spirit realm, you know, the, our, our spirit, our human spirit, our soul, and our body. So God's desire is this, that it will be preserved blameless. Okay, question. God is omniscient. He's sovereign. So anything a person goes through or about to go, go through, God knows already. So then can abuse and trauma be stopped from happening by godly intervention? And does that happen? Okay, so uh, again, we are, you know, this question of, uh, you know, the sovereignty of God and God's will versus uh, the, the free will of man. Right? So um, obviously, God is a good God. God is, uh, you know, all knowing, all powerful, and He is the Lord of all. So there is also the, you know, the action of man, right? So we need to look at both. God has given us 
as free model agents, he's given us the ability to choose. Okay, so when we look at, let's say, uh, uh, tra trauma or abuse, it is, it is the choice. You know, it is the action of man. You know, someone else decided, planned, and did this. Okay, can God protect? Yes, He does. Can God forewarn us? Yes, He does. Right. But um, do these things happen? And today, uh, you know, uh, uh, maybe. You know, there are too many factors, right? Maybe God, you know, God did speak, and I didn't obey, or you know, uh, and uh, too many things, right? And maybe God did warn, and uh, maybe at that time I was not even a, a you know, believer. I was not even born again, and whatever. So God does protect, uh, but it also, you know, we also know that there is the free man as there is a free. Uh, 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 model agent man is a free model agent to me. So the and the question, you know, like you know, why is there suffering in the world? You know, God is sovereign. You know, why is there suffering in the world? Right, all that. Why is there sin? Why is there suffering? You know. So and the and the reason is this: that uh, man is uh, sovereign. I mean, sorry, man is uh, has a free will. So man's action has consequences. Um, then we also know that uh, it could be my own consequences, right? Um, uh, as a as, as a person who went through the suffering. Sometimes it's my own consequence, uh, a consequence of my own action, right? Um, that is also a possibility. The third one is also because of, um, uh, because Satan is uh, uh, one who was a deceiver, one who's a murderer, he's a, he's a tempter, right? Uh, steal, kill, kills, and destroy. So, um, so that is the third one. And, and of course, the fourth one is, you know, others' actions. So these are, you know, these are things that happen, and then uh, yes, uh, God does intervene. God does warn, but but these these things happen for various other reasons as well, right? Yeah, hope that helps, Divya. Any further thoughts on that? Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, sometimes. So, um, so the, the but the good thing is this. You know, no matter what horrible trauma or abuse a person has gone through and what kind of you know the kind of damage that they've you know experienced um, uh, there's always a way out there is always uh, healing and restoration right uh, because of the finished work of the cross there is always and the Lord can and will and does bring them to that place where and their life becomes a testimony and a uh, you know, they are voice of hope for people. Right? People hear them and say, okay, I can relate to that. And uh, even I want to come back to that. You know, maybe they are in that hopeless state, but their hope is revived, faith is restored, and they can, um, they are healed to that extent. Then when they look at the scars, or when even when they look at the memory of what happened, um, they are able to, you know, uh, they're able to talk about it. Uh, and and also offer that as a as a story of hope. Right? Uh, so that's the thing. Like recently, just yesterday, I think somebody had posted uh, um, the the picture of uh, Graham Stain's uh, the eldest daughter you know, and her family and so on. So um, you know they went through horrible things. And for Mrs. Stain's to actually turn around and say, "I forgive," uh, I think that's. Uh, that's the work of the cross, you know. um, and also I think uh, JJ Cannon, Cannon John, I think uh, that his name. So on his uh, you know program, there was an interview with a couple who who actually forgave their son's murderer. Right? The son was a young man, and uh, he was actually murdered by another man. So they actually went up to that man and said. You know, we we forgive you, right? uh, um, and uh, and that kind of a healing. Uh, it's not like they don't feel that pain. Obviously, you know, it's been a great loss. But then, you know, they've been restored to the fact that yes, you know, all that hope of reunion, uh, uh, you know, is is all is all there. And in Christ, because of the finished work of the cross, they have been restored to that emotionally to function again, right? Emotionally to to not just function, but thrive. Not just as a victim of something, but overcome that. And that is possible. Right? 
Um, so the basis, when we look at the basis of even taking that step towards restoration, we see that God wants as well. God wants as well in these areas. Psalm 23, uh, uh, the psalmist uh, is a testimony. You know, he just testifies and then he restores my soul. He restores my soul. So there's restoration. You know, restoration, you can imagine it as a, a broken bone being set or a, or a wound, a healing. Uh, you know, he restores that. Right? Um, and so, so, you know, a twofold meaning, repairing, restoration, restoring, refreshing, and bringing to a state of wholeness. And also, you know, to turn back, you know, restoration in terms of relationships. So something being repaired and restored and rebuilt, and also in terms of relations, something like that is when you know you turn back and uh, returning um, to God. Right? So both happen; uh, that restoration happens, and He restores. God restores our soul. Okay? So the work of restoration of our soul involves healing, which means repairing and making well what has been damaged, what has been inflicted upon with pain, right? Um, there's a healing of that that happens. And um, it could also involve deliverance, meaning there is a setting free from the evil one, setting free from the work of the enemy, setting free from, um, from the prison of the enemy, like from the demonic spirits. So there's, it involves healing, it involves deliverance, and thirdly, third aspect of it, it involves an ongoing journey, okay, a walk of restoration, a path on the path of restoration, right? an ongoing thing. And uh, of course, we need to do certain things on an ongoing, uh, in an ongoing manner, in order to stay you know, healthy. All of us, as believers, you know, in order to stay healthy emotionally, uh, we do certain things in an ongoing manner, right? But it involves the Word of God, uh, a steady diet of the Word of God, and worship, and prayer, and, and just being in His presence, is soaking in His presence, right? So it involves that. So And more so for those who want a restoration of and healing and deliverance of their soul. Okay. Okay. So we'll, we'll stop here, and then we'll, we'll look at that. So we, what we looked at is just the surface, right? The fact that God wants this for the believer, that God wants this for the person who is injured, you know, emotionally. Uh, God wants that person to be made whole, right? Uh, that may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless. He wants this as an ongoing thing, right? Okay. Let's never forget that. Is that and that's good news. That's great news, right? Okay, okay. So we'll stop here, and uh, we'll meet again on Thursday for um, in a wholeness. Okay, thank you. God bless. Have a great weekend. We'll catch up next week. Bye bye. Thank you, Pastor. Bye. bye.